Hi everyone, this is Master Art Sandman 1, and today I'm doing my long planned review of eight Ghost Recon Wildlands figures. So I've been working on these figures for the last six months. Only three months after I started up my channel, so I've been planning for this for a long time. So I'm really excited to show this all uh, to show all eight of these figures to you. If you follow my uh, uh, sorry Google Plus page, I was about to say Goshikon. It's just Goshikon on the brain. But if you follow my Google Plus page, I think four months ago or something around there, I think it was in last August, I posted a picture of the original version that I made of Nomad and a dirt bike for him. So that you will see the dirt bike later but then he got an overhaul because my original draft was quite inaccurate because once i found better reference photos closer to the release of the game here um then i read it uh, i redid all his tactical vest and his shirt and everything but the rest of these figures no one has ever seen so also, of course, Goshikon Wildlands comes out tonight. I'm super hyped for that. And now, let's get so into So let's start off with Nomad. He's the team leader of the four-man ghost squad that is deployed in Bolivia for Operation Kingslayer, which, of course, is the mission to assassinate El Sueño and take down the whole Santa Blanca drug cartel. But starting off with this guy, first of all, we have his Knight's Armament Company... Uh, Stoner LMG A1. So, this is a... I'm pretty sure it's a Brick Arms Saw. Uh, M249 Saw uh, LMG. That I added clay to the front of the barrel to fill it in the way that a Stoner LMG looks. I added a clay holographic site and three power magnifier of course this is a eotech style holographic site and then i also added a uh foregrip i cut the uh i'll just take the magazine right off right now i cut the magazine so it has the kind of hexagonal shape that the stoner magazine has and then i also painted the bullets and then, of course, this just slides right in to this hole right here. And then the magazine is attached. And then I painted over it, of course. But now that we're, we have that out of the way, now we can look at the figure himself. So first of all, made out of clay, I molded all this. He has three pistol mags, a big, like, I'd say it's probably a medic pouch or something in that uh, range some just random gear, I'm not completely sure what it is, and a little pouch that, uh, again, I molded out of clay. Then underneath, he has a uh, plate carrier, which I painted the, um, well, uh, I think it's called the Molly, um, kind of hooks or something like that, but I painted that around on the sides too, don't go off that name, Molly Hooks, but it's something around that. Molly Weave, I think, maybe? But then he also has his red t-shirt, which then also has some detail on it, some little holes in it where I painted some flesh. And then I also painted his um, arms onto just red Lego figure arms. Then here he also has a G-Shock wrist watch. And then he has his gloves, which are just the normal Lego tan color, but with some weathering on them. Then his backpack is completely molded again, out of clay. And it has little patches all over it, and um, a, I'd say that's a, like, sleeping mat that's rolled up in a tube. And then he has, like, a little pouch down there, a little tube-shaped pouch. And then again, yeah, as I said, he has some old patches there, and then these two little pouches. Over here, he has his pistol, 
in a holster, and then that is crazy glued onto his legs to line up with the two leg straps that are on his leg, of course. <laughs> that was a bit repetitive, but yeah. So then here he has his belt buckle, and that belt is painted the whole way around. Of course, you can't see the back because the backpack hangs down. But then also on his feet, I'll take Nomad off. He has his uh, hiking shoes, as Goshi Khan calls them, because the hiking boots are more heavy. So these are the hiking shoes. I painted on the soles in light gray. I painted the shoes in, gray, in a dark gray. And then it's difficult to see because of the lighting, but I painted on the little laces on his boots as well. Then now that I have the figure in my hand, uh, now let's look at the um, hat. So he has some little weathering on the end of the hat because in the game, it's kind of his hat's kind of torn up and stuff. It's raggedy. But then he also has the little um, Spartan helmet on the front. Then he also has. I painted all the little gray lines on his hat. And then I also painted the little buckle for um, kind of the adjustable baseball cap thing. And then there's some words that kind of go up, up across there, so I just painted that in silver and just tried to approximate what it looks like. Then he also has um, molded or sculpted, I guess, um, what is it, ear protection. And then I also made a little um, mouthpiece for him. But now we can take off the baseball cap, and then you can see underneath he has his Oakley's, uh, Oakley M frames. He has his full beard, which I painted on, and I weathered in it to kind of add some different colors to it. And then I just painted his hair in the back. But then, actually, while we have the figure disassembled, we can actually take them all apart. Just to show all my figures, you can completely take them apart. Of course, this is just underneath, so you usually don't see that, so I don't make it look all nice. But again, here you can see the belt going around. And that's about it. So now, as I put this figure back together, let's go and look at uh, Weaver. So as I said, now we have Weaver. He is Nomad's best friend, and he is the designated sniper of the uh, ghost team. So first of all, he has a 6 hour P226 pistol in his hand, and as that just dropped, he also has this MSR sniper rifle. So this is listed on the Brick Republic website as the Flex sniper rifle, so if you want to buy it yourself, specifically this uh, piece, that's where you need to look, and that's the name. And I'm not sure if I said this already, it's from Combat Brick. So I painted all the camo onto this, on both sides. And then the way that it was attached onto the backpack is when I was making this backpack piece, I molded a hole into it, which then fits this little tab that I crazy glued on, which then lets you just friction fit it into the backpack. So then if you don't want him to be carrying the sniper in his hands, you can just do that and then uh, take his pistol out. Then, now that we're looking at his back, let's look at the backpack. So I'll take the figure off the stand, and so here is Weaver's backpack. If I can get this to focus. Um... So it has some detail in it. I painted the gray straps. And then right here, there's a little ghost uh, skull patch. And then he has some weathering all over the backpack. Um, on his legs, he has this camo painted all over his pants. He has the knee pads molded on. And then he has his boots with the uh, cuffs rolled up on his pants. Then he also has some leg straps with a little pistol uh, mag pouch over there, and the pistol holster, which I didn't use one of the tiny tactical ones that has a pistol in it because I made this figure that then he'll be able to hold the pistol in his hands and it'll look accurate. So for his sweater, 
I painted all the details, like the zipper going down, the little like elastic at the bottom of it, which goes all the way around, and then the elastic at the ends of the arms of his rolled up arms on the sweater, and then the um, little bands that he has going around his arms. He also has some weathering on the arms and main body. Now here he has his chest rig, which I made the patches for, and I just painted the chest rig directly onto his body. He also has a little t comms unit that then goes down here and ends right there at his backpack. Then his face is fully painted by me, even the eyes and mouth, which isn't usual. I have a few more figures in this uh, showcase that have a fully painted head. But he has his goatee, his uh, haircut that's um, left uh, long on the top and then completely shaved on the sides. So I tried to approximate the kind of buzz cut well. And then I also made his earpiece, which then runs down his head just into his torso. But that is pretty much it for Weaver. And now let's look at- So here we have Midas. He is the newest member of the ghost team that is executing Operation Kingslayer. So first of all, we'll do the 360. Just looking around. While we're here, we'll look at the head. I made his ponytail and his backpack with some weathering on it and I made all the little, um, little details in it. I also put a smoke grenade on his backpack. But while we're looking at the head, I'll just take that off. So, this was a really specific way that I made this. So, as you can see, the whole bandana doesn't come off in one piece. I took a Lego bandana and I cut off the main front part. I glued it onto the head and then I added clay around the sides to fill it in. And then I used clay just on the bandana part that's on the body because just a normal Lego bandana won't be able to fit around his hair or the um, plate carrier that he has. So while we're looking at this head, um, we can see that he has his ponytail, which I just sculpted onto the back. And then he also has the little earpiece painted in behind his bandana. And then his bandana has the whole like design that goes all around it with all the stripes. And now we'll put his head back on. And now let's look at his ACR. So this is his ACR. It's actually a, um, I'm pretty sure it's Sidan, um, Scar H. But I cut the magazine to then make it into a like um, banana style magazine, not just a stick mag like the Scar L or Scar H has. I also cut down the stock a bit. There was a piece that made it like really extended in the middle. So then I cut that down and then I just put the stock back on without the extra extended piece in it. Then I also made the holographic site on it, the EOTech style holographic. And then I also made the laser and the grenade launcher that's on the bottom. And then of course I painted the magazine. And then on the other side, it's pretty much mirrored except there isn't the laser sight. But now that we're just looking at the figure, as you can see, this arm doesn't have any tattoos, but on this arm he has the tattoos that are game accurate. Then. On the front of his plate carrier, he had I painted in all the, um, again, molly straps or something like that. And then he also has the smoke grenade that's right there. And he has his pouches that are on the front. Then on the backs of his legs, he has his boots painted on and the straps for his knee pads, which I molded on the front. Then if we take him off again, we can take a closer look at those um, knee pads. So yeah, there you can see those. I also painted the little um, 
a little pocket on his pants and I painted his belt which goes all the way around his legs. Then also, as you saw in the back, there's an extra strap which is for this shotgun that's in a holster. I'm pretty sure this is a Spaz 12 shotgun that's in a leg holster for him, so I molded that out of clay and then painted it up and crazy glued it onto his legs. Then on his boots, you can also see I painted on the laces. And that is about it for no or so for this is Holt. The first thing that I want to show you with this guy, again, this guy is one of the ghosts, but he has a HK416, which I find I did a really nice paint job on. So I did a darker tan on the parts that would come in a tan color, like the um, uh, flash hider, the laser sight, and the buttstock piece. But then the rest of the gun I just dry brushed tan on, and I feel like it made a really cool look. Then also you can see that on the other side. And I really like how this gun turned out. So now let's just look at Holt himself. So again we'll do the 360. As you can see on the back he has the backpack which I molded. It has the three pouches. or And then it also has these little straps and I weathered the backpack a bit. Then on his leg he has a holster with a pistol in it. And the strap of that goes all the way around the leg also on the front. He only has one knee pad, which is game accurate, and then he has this little pocket which I painted on, and he has his hiking boots, which I painted the laces onto, right on the tops, and I painted the soles. Then on his arms he has tattoos on both arms, he has his fingerless gloves, and his G-Shock wristwatch. He also has his chest rig, which has a little wire cutter right there, being that he's the engineer of the group. Then he also has all these little pouches, which I molded around, and the plate carrier goes all the way around, and if I were to uh, cut the backpack off, being that it's crazy glued on right now, you would also be able to see the, uh, the chest rig on his back too. Then here we also have his shemog, which is just molded out of clay and then painted a bit. And then he also has this little green wire that comes out of his backpack into the here, into his comms device. And then for his hair, he also has a similar haircut to Weaver, buzzed on the sides and then longer on the top, with this one little cutout. He also has a stubble beard, which I painted on. And then I repainted his eyebrows in a darker color. Then he also has these, or this headset, which I molded. Uh, and that is about it for Holt. So now we are done all of the um, ghosts, and now we'll finish off the uh, US allied figures with Karen Bowman. She is the ghost's CIA informant in Bolivia. And first of all, we'll look at her G36. Uh, if I can get it out of her hand, there. So all I did with this one was I added a slight bit of weathering in dark green on it. And then that's on the other side too. But that's pretty much just about it. So now looking at Karen Bowman. I molded her hair. Um, I did the best I could, but it was pretty difficult. I had trouble with it, but I'm good with the way it looks now. I also painted her face, and I painted this tattoo on her arm. This uh, torso, this isn't a Lego brand torso. This is a Aerolite curved torso, which then, as you can see, has the curve on the side, whereas other figures are just completely straight right there so then this is made specifically for female figures so I painted her tank top on and then that goes around to the back too and then she also has her belt with a silver belt buckle and the belt is painted all the way around 
She has a pistol and a leg holster, which again has the straps, and she has these knee pads, which also have these straps going around. And then, last of all, she just has these gray boots with um, black laces. And that's about it for Karen Bowman. Now let's look at the Santa Blanca. So here is El Sueño, the leader of the Santa Blanca drug cartel. And as you can see, I added an extra um, Lego collectible minifigure display stand because I made this custom display stand for him. I weathered this whole piece with gray, with a dark gray, which I dry brushed on. And then I added this bag and some baking powder, or baking powder, yeah, which then I crazy glued onto the base to make it look like cocaine is spilling out of his bag of drugs. Being that the Santa Blanca drug cartel mainly, or only, supplies cocaine. So I figured this was fitting for his figure. But now, we'll just look at El Sueño himself. He's a pretty simple figure, or I mean simple as he doesn't have much going on on him, but he was quite uh, difficult to make as I had to do all the tattoos, not only on his face, but also on his torso, which is the cross that goes down from his face onto his chest. But then on his head, he has this skull, this Santa Blanca skull on the back. He has these tattoos that just go all around the side. And then, just to make it look complete, I just kind of scribbled around the top. As, other than the skull and the cross that goes around his face, none of the, um, you can't really tell what anything else is. Other than also the S and B for Santa Blanca that's on each side of the cross. Then he also has his suit jacket, uh, pinstripe suit jacket, which has the little Santa Blanca pin on it. And then this continues all around his body and just the slightest bit onto his legs and on his arms, of course. And his legs are pretty plain. They're just plain black, but then they have the gray shoes painted onto them. And as you can see right there, the laces are painted on as well. And now let's look at El Miro, the head of cartel. So here is El Miro. He is considered the cartel equivalent of a ghost. So he is very highly trained. Uh, but first of all, let's look at his gun, which is a vector submachine gun. It has a suppressor on it and a holographic sight. And all I did to this was I weathered it with a light gray, which I dry brushed all around. But now let's look at the figure himself. So first of all, he has this plate carrier, which has a knife, a pistol holster on it, which I painted the pistol that's sticking out of it black. And that goes all the way around, which I painted in gray. I also painted the sides of the vest. He also has this t-shirt underneath in black, which I painted the sleeves for, and then I also painted some muscle detail on his arms. He has his gloves, which, have, which are the Kevlar gloves from Goshikon, and they have little black pieces of Kevlar all over on the fingers. And you can see I also approximated that on the thumbs. He also has his silver belt buckle, which then is on this battle belt, which goes all the way around. And I'll take off the torso so you can get a better look at that. But, so yeah, now that that's in better light and it's not being shadowed by the um, plate carrier, you can see that in gray going all the way around. While we have this taken off, you can also see I weathered the pants with some dry brush and gray, and then I also added the knee pads and his boots, which you can see here, going all the way around, and then they have the laces painted onto them too right there. Here, then at the last part of him, is you can see his head is fully painted by me. I took a normal Lego head in this like very dark flesh color, dark nougat, I'd say, and then I 
actually used an eraser and I just erased all the printing off. And then I just painted his hair on because he has such a tight shave. So I just painted it, uh, painted his hair cut directly onto his head. And then I painted his goatee with the stubble that comes off of it and his narrow cheekbones and his eyes and eyebrows. But now we'll give him back his vector and that is about it. Now last Four. and I guess least, we have just a random cartel um, security guard or just kind of smuggler or anything you really want him to be. So he has these glasses painted onto his head, he has this goatee around his mouth. Those glasses just go around to where his ears would be. And then his shirt, I just painted some detail onto it, painted some lines of where the shirt would kind of be going around his muscles and just where it would be kind of crinkling up and stuff. His sleeves are rolled up, so I painted some tattoos on his arms. Those are on both sides. And then he also has this little pocket on his legs. Or on his leg, he has this belt, which just kind of goes all the way around. And then his shoes are just in plain black. Then around his neck, he also has some more tattoos in black. And he has this plain old AK-47, which I painted the brown onto the grip for the wooden detail, and then I just did all the kind of weathering in uh, light gray. But that is pretty much it for the Santa Blanca cartel member. And now let's look at the bonus uh, parts, which I uh, said that would be coming up so at the start of the, the bonus uh, custom builds, which I made for this uh, review. So first of all, let's look at this doom buggy. So this is one of the Unidad Doom Buggies from the game. Now that the game is coming out tomorrow and I played the open beta, I realized that this is quite wide, but I like the look of it, so I kept it this way. I completely built this just from my own parts that I have, and I didn't find any um, specific like inspiration on, on how to do any specific parts of this. So there's a slight, there's a slight uh, kind of angle that the front hood is on. Then it also has these lights behind the roll cage on the front. Then the wheels are attached on with a full axle system, which I made. So then even from the bottom, it looks pretty realistic. Then I also did a lot of weathering on the tires with paint on the axles and just also around the insides of the wheels or in the hubcaps but also on the inside of the wheel wells just with a lot of brown and light brown just to make it look really weathered and like it went through a lot of mud and stuff kind of in the Bolivia climate then it also has the brake lights on the back it has the full cage that goes around which I approximated here with actually some Lego harpoon guns in black, which I added to some little clips. Then those go up into the roof, and then there's also these roll cage bits that go into the roof in the back right here. But then also, as you can see on the roof, there is a minigun, which is accurate to the game. Then also the doors on each side can open, and now I'll show you how you can get inside. So see, there's this one bar which goes down the middle right here. And then on the roof piece, there's this one little clip which is directly in the middle. So then you can detach the roof. And then when you want to put it back on, you just line up that clip right with this post. And if you get it right, then you can just reattach it. Sometimes you have to readjust the... Um, uh, roll cage bits, but usually it's pretty good. But now we'll take that back off and you can see the inside. So there's a steering wheel, there's two seats, and there is room in the back for figures. So I'll show you now Nomad driving. Then also I made it that, oh, 
there. See the wheels there on a hinge, so sometimes they do that if you push too hard on the body. But I also made it that the seats are one stud further back from the steering wheel, so then it can approximate their backpacks. But then we can see, we'll just put Holt in with him. Again, his seat can also approximate his backpack. Um, just try to get him in there. And then we can put the roof back on and there is clearance for their heads. And I find that looks pretty good. We can also add Midas in the back if we want. And he can be using the minigun. Just like that. It doesn't completely line up, but it looks good enough. And for most of the time when figures aren't going to be in this vehicle, it looks pretty good. But let's move that out of the way. And then we also have these two Lego dirt bikes, which I customized. So these are just the normal Lego dirt bikes, except I painted a lot onto the wheels to make them look like they've been going through mud and dirt and stuff. And then also I um, painted some dirt and just kind of just things that would get on this vehicle through driving around. I also painted some gray on some of the axles and stuff. But then also the seats are painted in black. And here the seat is painted in gray. I did some gray weathering all around the vehicle. I also extra weathered it on the inside of the wheel well, which I also did here. As you can see, there's a lot of brown and black in there. And then again, I did some gray on the bars that hold the wheels on and stuff. But now, as you can see, we'll just put a figure on one of these, just like you can go on these in the game. So just here is Weaver riding one of the dirt bikes. I won't attach his hands just because make it easier. But here are the ghosts in some vehicles and then they can go around Bolivia. So, so this has been my review of my Lego custom Ghost Recon Wildlands figures. So click here to subscribe. Click here to see all my other Lego customs. And so please like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.